Hi, I'm Peter Tragos, host of the Lawyer You Know podcast and YouTube channel. The saying goes, everyone hates lawyers until you need one. Well, I'm here when you need one to answer your questions and give you insight that you didn't know you needed. Along with my partners, Pete Sardis, the professor, who has a finance and business background, and George Tragos, my dad, and the conciliary, a criminal defense giant, we can answer any questions you have. What's up, everybody? We are back to talk debt be heard. We are going to get into some questions and answers, as we always do at the end of the video. But first, I want to talk a little bit about what we're going to get done this week. I was supposed to be in trial, which was going to just line up perfectly with this debt be heard trial because mine was supposed to be just for this week and it's gone. But whatever. It's been continued, which is very frustrating and continues to happen to us. But we fight on. Um, so this week, instead, we are going to be doing a Debt V Heard Live every single day in the afternoon, anywhere from two o'clock to six o'clock. I think the next two we have set for 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so we will um, be jumping on here to do that. But what I've decided to do, instead of just do a pure question and answer, which we may do at least one day this week, I've decided to come up with a little topic to um, explain and dig in a little bit more to this Debt V Heard trial um, so that we can understand kind of as a group what's going on while still staying objective and not seeing things that the jury wouldn't necessarily see for the most part. Um, and today's topic is going to be, because and these are the first three topics that I've come up with are straight from you all. Um, they are the most commonly asked questions and asked things about this trial, which is why I'm going to dig into them. And today's topic is, why is all this evidence not coming into trial? I thought we wanted the jury to hear the truth. Why are these lawyers keeping this evidence out and keeping the truth from the jury? Why is this evidence considered inadmissible? Why can't we just tell the jury everything all the time? That's what we're going to talk about today before we get to the questions and answers. Um, tomorrow, uh, and I don't want to spoil for you guys because I know most of you probably care more about tomorrow's topic than today. Um, but tomorrow's topic, I am actually going to dig in a little bit and explain how I would cross-examine Amber Heard. What I would use, how I would impeach her, what topics I would spend more time on, that's gonna be tomorrow. And then Wednesday, I'm gonna talk about what witnesses I would call on rebuttal if I was Johnny Depp's lawyer. So we're gonna you know, role play a little bit this week to have some fun with that because I get so many questions on who would you call? How would you cross Amber Heard? Why is all this evidence not coming in? Those are some of the biggest question. So we're going to get to that this week. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already um, and like the video so you can hit that reminder bell and you don't miss any of our lives this week that we're going to do on Johnny Depp. I'm sure it's going to be a smaller group than we've had um, over our last few videos just because the trial's off. People are taking a break and I get that and it'll be fun because we'll be able to get to all the questions um, and we'll be able to do all this, you know, hopefully in an hour or an hour and a half and not have to push it too long um, like we've had to do on a couple other videos. We are almost to 70K. And I know it's probably a stretch, but if we hit that 70K mark during this live, we will give away, uh, we'll do a giveaway on the live to somebody that's on the video. So if you haven't subscribed, go subscribe. If we don't hit 70K during the live, we will still be doing a giveaway at 75K, uh, no matter what, which we're hoping to hit this week. Um, so let's get into it. Let's talk about why the lawyers are so bad and want to hide the truth from juries. Okay. So the main thing when you think about how evidence works and how trials work and how juries work is we want the jurors to make the decision in the best interest of justice, right? That's what everybody says. And that's really is what we want as lawyers, but that doesn't always mean the same thing when you look at it um, as lay people, because lay people usually think I want everything in front of me and I want to be able to look and see, um, if this is true, if it's false, I can tell if somebody's lying, I can tell if evidence is accurate or not, um, or authentic or not. So just put it in front of me and let me make that decision. Well, we can't take that chance in the law because people's lives are on the line, a lot of money, their livelihood, their reputation can be on the line at trial. So we don't want to let evidence that is not authentic or is not reliable come in. So let's just think about that as an overarching theme, okay? And let's get to a few different descriptions of how we can determine whether or not evidence is reliable or credible. And the first one that everybody loves to talk about is hearsay, okay? 
out of court statement used to prove the truth of the matter asserted what that actually means we learn about in law school um, in various different ways. But why is hearsay not considered reliable and why don't we just let people come and testify to what they've seen and heard? Well, if your evidence is not based on a witness's personal knowledge or observations, but a statement made by somebody else, you can't cross-examine that person. And that's the first thing and the first tool you can't do that make it less credible. So we are all interested on how they're going to cross-examine Amber Heard. And my video tomorrow is really going to focus on that. And we're going to talk about how important it is that you can't just take the stand and say whatever you want. You've got to answer for that. And you probably have previous statements and pictures and recordings and all sorts of things that if you lie on the stand, I can impeach you with that. But think about it. If I just said, oh, John told me, Johnny, John is probably a bad word to use or a bad uh, name to use in this case. Let's say Mark told me Johnny Depp abused Amber. Well, if I want to cross-examine you and I say, well, didn't Mark also say this or wasn't Mark also here? You could just say, I don't know. You have to ask Mark. I don't know. I can't answer for Mark. Yet you're saying something Mark said to prove this case. And I don't have the right to cross-examine you or to impeach you or to impeach Mark more importantly, because Mark's not here. So the lack of cross-examination is the biggest one. Secondarily, we've all played the game telephone, right? So I say to my friend, Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. And then by the end, it's Peter Piper did something and we don't really know what that something was because as I told one person who told another who told another, it comes out the other side very different than what the initial declarant or person saying something said. So because of telephone, we can't have hearsay coming in at trial, right? Now, there are tons of exceptions. And if anybody cares about the exceptions, we can do a whole other video um, talking about what all the exceptions are to hearsay. And those exceptions are in place because sometimes what somebody else said can be reliable or what somebody else said is not important enough to keep out. Let's let the jury hear it and let them make the determination. <clears throat> so in this case, some example of things that aren't coming in as hearsay are things that Amber herself told other people, are things that Amber's friends or people that are no longer alive said to Amber because we can't cross-examine those people. We can't um, impeach those people. Um, even Johnny, who wanted to talk about some of the things that his friends or his security said, he wasn't able to get into them because that's hearsay. Some of the recordings have hearsay on them. Some of the text messages have hearsay on them where we can only see Johnny or Amber's text and not the other person sometimes. Same thing with the recordings. If other people are saying things that are going to be used for the truth of what they assert, those aren't going to come in. So that's some evidence that's been kept out in this case because of hearsay. Next, and this is kind of where we start for the most part, is relevant evidence. Relevant evidence means evidence having any tendency to make the existence of any fact that is of consequence of the determination of the action more probable or less probable than it would be without the evidence. Basically what that means is any evidence that comes in that tends to prove or disprove something. So if it's just some other kind of evidence, it's not going to come in. And an example of that is... Amber Heard's prior arrest when she was a kid for driving on a suspended license, which I saw circulating on Twitter. Look, here's another arrest. She lost her car and she drove anyways. Now, the fact that she was arrested, what does that tend to prove or disprove about defamation? Doesn't prove much. And that leads us into another portion of relevant evidence, and that is evidence that's prejudicial value has to be weighed against its probative value meaning how bad it is and how much people are going to hate it or hate the person or the, the party because of this evidence, we have to weigh that about how much it proves, right? And if the prejudicial value, meaning the way it's going to hurt somebody or hurt a, a client or make a client not likable from the jury, if it is substantially outweighed by the probative value, then the, then the evidence can come in, okay? And that's a really important part about it. Um, and that's 403 if you ever hear that 403. That probative value has to be substantially outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice, okay? So if it proves something, that's fine. But if the, if, if the substantial part of it is actually going to be worse for somebody, like I said, a prior arrest a lot of times, we don't want that to happen. Um, another example of this is a lot of people brought up the fact that Amber Heard is being investigated for perjury because something to deal with her dog in Australia. We haven't heard that come out yet. And while ordinarily perjury would be something you could bring in because it goes to the veracity and whether or not somebody is likely to tell the truth, which is right at issue in this case. 
But the fact that she has a police investigation is so prejudicial, I would hazard a guess that that's why it hasn't come in yet. Okay? So we want to bring in things that prove or disprove facts in the case, but not to the level where a jury is going to say, no matter what they say now, I don't believe them. We don't want that. All right. <clears throat> Privileged evidence, which we've, we've seen some in this case with mental health experts, other lawyers, doctors, et cetera. Privileged evidence, the reason that doesn't come in and that's protected is because we want people as a public society, we want people to be honest with their therapists. We want them to be honest with their priests, honest with their lawyers. And if they knew that this could come back to bite them later or somebody else may hear about this, they may be less honest and it could hurt the public at large or individuals. So that's why we want to make sure we protect those privileged conversations. It's not hiding something from the jury. It's something that's very important to our society. Thank you, Sheena. All right, the last one I want to talk about is the reliability of evidence. How reliable is the evidence that's coming in? And we have certain ways to prove this reliability by stating that it's a business record and providing affidavits and things that show that this, in fact, was a business record kept in the normal course of business. But we don't want evidence to come in that might mislead the jury or trick the jury based on its reliability. So if there are conflicting accounts, if the person who actually took the picture or the video is unavailable to talk about when they took it or how they took it, the metadata can go to how reliable a piece of evidence is. And in this case, that's the main reason I think something all of us have been calling for, which is the prior charge of, of or prior accusation and arrest of domestic violence that Amber has in a past relationship. And I think the real reason it hasn't come into this trial is because it's not reliable. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. But when we talk about the reliability of something, she was accused and arrested of it, never convicted, never formally charged. When this accusation was made, Amber and the alleged victim both said it wasn't abuse and both said that her arrest was the result of bigotry from the law enforcement officer. So if that was, and that was also never proven one way or the other. So if either one of those things were true, now we're in a position where we're throwing something up against the jury or to the jury that is highly prejudicial in a case like this, that Amber has been an abuser in a prior relationship. And it should only come in if the door is open, which is why I am not usually in favor of something like this coming in. But in this case, I thought it absolutely should come in when Dr. Hughes, Amber Heard's expert psychologist, said that as part of her entire analysis and diagnosis of Amber, she took into account that she has no prior history of anything dealing with domestic abuse. And that's just false. And now that we have those statements that mislead the jury, I think the jury needs to know the other side and that she has at least been accused of this in the past. And we can leave it at that. We don't have to say she's a domestic abuser. We don't have to say she's been convicted. Just that she has been accused in the past to combat Dr. Hughes and her testimony and maybe the entirety of her diagnosis. Because the entirety of her diagnosis is called into question if she has incorrect information in making her decisions and making and rendering her opinions in this case. That's why I think it should come in. Not, I don't think every time somebody's been accused of a crime, it should come in. And in fact, when we talk about relevant evidence, usually character evidence is not allowed to come in because just because someone has done something in the past does not mean that they've done it here. And so a lot of times it does not come out unless it becomes relevant in the case or becomes at issue in the case, which we've talked about, the veracity of both parties. And when you have domestic violence in a criminal sense, the character of the defendant and the character of the victim and the potentially violent character of the victim will come into play and is relevant in the case. So it's very interesting how all these rules of evidence work and why some of this evidence that a lot of you are out there, especially on Twitter and Instagram, hitting me up saying, why isn't this coming in? Why isn't that coming in? This would prove the case for Johnny. Well, there are rules that keep irrelevant, inadmissible, unreliable, or misleading evidence away from the jury because we don't want the case to turn on something that it shouldn't turn on. So that's why we want to protect this process as being a sacred judicial process. And I understand a lot of people will still not agree with that. I just wanted to try to 
kind of explain where the lawyers come from and where the rules of evidence come from on this point. So we're about to get into the question and answer portion. Um, so put in your debt v. heard uh, questions. This week, we are also jumping into a couple other cases that we've handled in the past or not handled, but uh, reviewed and analyzed in the past. Gabby Petito um, and Brian Laundry. for those of you who followed that case, her mother has filed a wrongful death lawsuit in Florida. We break that down. That video is posting tonight. We go through that entire complaint for wrongful death. I talked to you about whether or not I think she can win it, whether or not I think she can collect and how it's different from the other lawsuits that have already been filed. We're also hitting the Aiden Fucci case. Um, Pete is doing that breakdown and that'll probably post tomorrow. And we'll look into another couple other cases while this Johnny Depp trial is not going on. Okay. Um, let's see here. Oh, and also we now have YouTube members, I guess. And we have our very first member. Whoop. Wayne Lang is our very first YouTube member. And the details with this will be posted on our page. So you can check them out there. We'll be posting about it in the community page as well. Um, but you can check that out. There are different ways to click. There's a way, spot on this video. You can click, click join to be a member and then also on our main page. Uh, but if you don't want to be a member, no big deal. Don't feel like you have to be. But you do have to subscribe and tell all your friends to subscribe. Let me check and see how close we are um, to... So we're just over 68,000 at this point. So we're still a long way from 70. But if we somehow get there during this live, I'll announce a winner um, for the giveaway. Uh, if not, we will still be doing one at 75K. So don't worry about it. Lisa Girl is also a new member. That's fun. All right, Lee Mellison, Melanson. Was there a new law passed recently that may affect the Johnny Depp case? I'm going to need more information than that to answer this question. Anoni Anton Brook, what makes you an expert on this case? Not being mean, just asking. No offense taken. I think I also saw that you asked um, if I was a lawyer. Yes, I am. So I'm not an expert on Johnny Depp. I'm not an expert on Amber Heard. I am a civil trial lawyer and I handle cases like this and try civil cases. So I like to look at it from an angle of how a civil trial lawyer would look at it. That's why I'm talking about the rules of evidence. I'm talking about cross-examining Amber Heard. I'm talking about witnesses called a rebuttal because those are all things I do for a living. Um, and what I focus my full practice on, uh, which is civil trial law. So that's what makes me an expert on the topic. What day does the trial continue? Next Monday, which would be the 16th. <clears throat> Southern Sass. Peter, what about the tissue sniffing? Would that be brought up or relevant? Problem with the tissue sniffing that people wanting to act like it's cocaine is you can't actually prove it's cocaine. Um, that would be very difficult to prove and you could look like you're just trying to harass the witness if you go there. So it may be off limits. Um, I don't expect any questions about that. Kit Kat, hypothetically speaking, if defamation is proved, could she sue her lawyers that approved, signed off on the op-ed for publication saying it was okay? So no, mainly because she probably didn't tell her lawyers that it was a lie, right? So if you go to your, if you come to me, Kit Kat, and you say, hey, Peter, I want to write this article about my ex-husband who abused me. Let's write this article. We write it. I approve it, which I don't really know why I would do that. But let's say I did. I approve it. You do it. You post it. It turns out to be a lie. You get super defamation. Well, unless you came to me and said, Peter, this is all a lie, but I want to hurt Johnny Depp and I really want to get at him. Let's publish it. Then those lawyers could have potential sanctions. That's unethical. She, I mean, I don't know if she could sue him if she was in cahoots with them, but they would be finding all sorts of problems if they're pushing a fraud that they know is a fraud and know is a lie. They would have all other, all sorts of other problems, not just coming from Amber Heard, but potentially from law enforcement and from their local bar association or state bar association. Stella Ford, question, why would they put her up before a week break? That gives them the upper hand to have a week to do research instead of moments in trial. Well, I think both sides are going to have this time to prepare. Um, and they wanted to get her up in case it was great. Then the jury is going to be thinking about this for a week. And if it was horrible, then they can have time to regroup and try to come back after the week and rehab her a little bit. Zeus, what about the NDA that was written up for the divorce? The trial has shown even though the op-ed didn't show his name, the ACLU, et cetera, discussions clearly intended people to figure it out. I agree with you, Zeus, 
And one of the things I find interesting is we haven't seen the NDA, at least if we have, I haven't seen it. I, I know we saw the divorce agreement and parts of it, but they haven't dug into the NDA. And that may be something that um, comes out in her cross, which is a little sneak peek as to something I may do uh, and talk about in her cross tomorrow. But um, the NDA to me would at least show that she knew she shouldn't talk about this stuff, yet she did anyways. So I think it would at least go to her mind mindset and mental state that she knew she shouldn't do this and she did it anyways. She knew, because here's the thing, if the NDA language says, because a lot of times if we write an NDA, we say, you can't disclose these facts because these flat facts would have a materially negative effect on the other person. And that's why we have an NDA and we have money associated with this. So if you were to disclose these facts, it would hurt this person. And if that was in the NDA and she still disclosed these facts, I think that's really good evidence against her. And I'll probably talk more about that tomorrow um, when we talk about her um, cross. Just made a little note to make sure that's in there. All right, thank you, Zeus, for the question. Dark Star, why did Chu, I know, I don't know how to spell it either. I think it's C-H-U, I think I looked it up, but I don't remember. Why Chu Chu did fist pump to reveal Glee at Moss? Better not reveal your cards. Now Herd's team knows what's coming because of media everywhere, explain. My only explanation I have, without knowing exactly how they're gonna use the Kate Moss stuff, my explanation, just as I know how trials go and what happens in trial, there was either an agreement a direction by the court or some inadmissible evidence that now they have opened the door to by talking about Kate Moss. It could be a number of things. It could be maybe there was an agreement they weren't going to talk about past relationships. It could be an agreement that maybe they weren't going to talk about how they've been accused of things in the past. Because if she's going to talk about prior accusations toward Johnny Depp, because again, he was not arrested, he was not convicted, he was not charged with abuse there but it was kind of a rumor in Hollywood, then maybe they can now talk about when she was accused or rumors of her domestic abuse in prior relationships. That's my guess, is that they opened the door to something that was either previously agreed upon or ordered by the court that they would not open the door to. Eckhart, why can't we see the members of the jury? Can the live audience see them? Yes, the live audience can see them. The main reason I think they don't put them out to the world on the uh, live streams is in case people disagree with the outcome of the trial, let's just say for argument's sake, Johnny Depp loses, which I think is possible legally. Even though I think at this point, the jury has to like him more and find him more believable. Legally speaking, it's still a difficult case. So let's say they come down with a verdict in favor of Amber Heard and all these millions of fans and literally millions. If you look at Johnny Depp's Instagram account has gone up a couple million followers. So if these millions of people are angry about the outcome, we do not want that to um, affect people's lives and have them picketing or doing things to these jurors or trying to find out where they live. It's hard enough to get people to serve on a jury. We don't want to add this kind of malice if it happens. Ron Burner, discuss credibility. I thought, okay, Ron, I think you Instagram messaged me and we went back. We, I talked to you a little bit on there and you said you were going to super chat. So here you are. Discuss credibility. I thought any falsely discovered in testimony and that witness is not credible. If jury finds Amber Heard caught in a lie, does that make the entire testimony not credible? Case closed. This was the question you asked me on Instagram as well. And I have an answer for you. Yes and no. So if she's caught in a lie, we as the lawyers can ask all the follow-up questions you've seen. Here's, here's though the definition of being caught in a lie. Johnny Depp was caught in a lie and a lot of other witnesses are caught in a lie for impeachment purposes, when you read an inconsistent statement from a prior deposition or prior trial, that was a sworn statement. So if they catch Amber Heard in a lie, and hers may be worse based on some of the things she said and more provably false. So let's say she's caught in a really big lie. The judge is not going to strike her prior testimony. The judge is not going to instruct the jury not to listen to her or to believe her prior deposition or her prior trial versus her testimony today at trial. The judge is going to leave that up to the jurors. And so when it comes to whether or not they're going to strike her uh, testimony entirely, case closed, if you were a juror, Ron, in my closing arguments, especially in a case like this, I always put up a jury instruction, which says, you as the jury get to determine the credibility of each witness. You can choose to believe all of what a witness says 
or none of what a witness says. And lots of times lawyers will say, and I submit to you, you can believe none of what Amber Heard said. But you can also believe some of what they say and disregard the rest. There's always some form of that in the jury instructions that we tell the jurors. And if somebody gets impeached over and over again, you better believe we're going to hammer that instruction in closing. So that if you're on that jury and you discredit everything she said, now she has no evidence to rebut what Johnny Depp said. And therefore, you have no option but to rule in favor of Johnny Depp. Thank you for the question in the super chat. Wayne S. Uh, and while he was up there, let me just say, Tragos Law right here is our handle on Instagram and Twitter. If you want to follow us there, reach out to us there. I get back to as many people as I possibly can on there, like Ron. Um, all right, Wayne S. AH's injury photos can be easily countered in that makeup is also used to create bruises in movies as she's a former makeup artist and would know. So that's an interesting, you know, angle to attack that not only could makeup have covered them up, but this could only be makeup that looks like bruises. Time Wanderer 777. Hey, it's Richard, buddy. Good to see you again. What's up, man? I've been seeing all your emails going back and forth. We are going to email you back soon. Buddy is a buddy of ours and of the channel and of the firm. Thanks for checking us out, buddy. All right, Bozo, can JD show real broken liquor bottles and pass his rings to the jury to impress upon them the damage AH would have sustained having walked on broken glass or being hit repeatedly with those rings on? I think potentially that's something that could come out in rebuttal. I definitely think it's something I would ask Amber Heard on cross. Like you see those rings he's wearing. He always wears those rings, right? Um, I definitely think the rings and the broken bottles and all of that stuff to refute the monster that she has created in the jury's mind. I think that's going to be something up there to potentially impeach her credibility like Ron asked about. All right, we've got some new members here. YouTube user is a new member. We've got Dana Sutton saying hello from Lando Lakes, Florida. We love our Florida people. Sherry Air Force Vet, thank you for your service and membership. Jen VH, would audio after Australia incident be hearsay? So I know a ton of you have listened to the entire audio and a ton of you have told me to go check it out on other channels. I really don't want to because I don't want um, to listen to it unless a jury listens to it. If a jury listens to it, then I, I will listen to it because I want to just try to keep my mindset on what they know. Because um, I can put out of my mind that she's been arrested for driving with a license suspended. Some people think if you're arrested, you're just a criminal forever. But but I, I can put a lot of that out of my mind. I don't want to hear anything from her voice because I might not be able to erase it from my memory and it may cloud my judgment on this one. So I'm trying not to listen to that. But so many people have asked me that if it does not come in a trial, post-trial, I will listen to it and we will talk about it. And whether or not I think it should come in, how it would have affected the case, whether or not it's an issue for appeal. So as it comes right now, I don't know how it would affect it, but everybody is telling me that it would sink Amber's case. So if that's the truth, I have to just guarantee Johnny's lawyers have tried to use it. Sco, new member, what's up? No Fear 64. Came in blind with no prior knowledge of case. So unbiased, good, no fear, that's awesome. Now fully behind JD. Please tell me he's going to win. What are the odds? I still think he has better odds to win. 60, 70% is what I'd put it in. Um, but I'm going to pop over to Lucia's question. Is it true that if Heard wins, if she proves only one time of abuse, <coughs> legally speaking, I think the answer is yes. Because of her op-ed, if she is a victim of domestic abuse and she's only been abused one time, it makes the statements in her op-ed true and therefore not defamation. So... You know, she still could win, and legally, it's difficult to prove this case. But I think that at this point, Johnny Depp's side seems to be more consistent and believable. And Amber Heard, because she's going so hard saying he's a serial uh, sexual predator, basically, and domestic abuser, that it's going to make her, heart, her side harder to believe. And therefore, it make it more likely and plausible that she is lying. And as Hogue said, she's a lying liar who lies, which then would make it a better chance for Johnny Depp to win. It's far from over but I think it's possible it could go either way still. Thank you, Just Me 77 Alex Rager. Can the deposition footage be brought in? Yes, 
if they are impeaching Amber. So if Amber gives an inconsistent statement that she gave, uh, meaning if here she said, I've never um, punched Johnny Depp before. And in her depot, she said she has punched Johnny Depp. They can play that portion of her depot as impeachment. Um, I know she didn't say that in the trial. I'm just giving that as an example. Um, but if she said, yeah, oh no, I never, I never punched him before. They could say, okay, is that your answer? And she says, yes. And they say, okay, let's play your deposition. See if this will refresh your recollection, play that deposition. And if it shows her rolling her eyes or getting snappy with the lawyers, then that could come in front of the jury potentially. MX Betty, thank you for the super chat. With evidence presented so far, do you think suing Amber for cutting off his finger would have been a more winnable case for Johnny? So it's a good question. I actually think the whole finger thing is kind of convoluted because he told so many different people so many different times that he cut off his finger. Um, he even said it on direct by way of verbiage. I know that's not what he was specifically saying, but it almost sounded like that. I think if he would have sued her for damage to his face, for punching his face, or for hitting him, um, just for battery, for civil battery. Now, we can't control as plaintiff's lawyers as civil lawyers, what uh, law enforcement charges and what the state attorney's office charges, because they have to make those determinations when it comes to criminal, to crimes. But we can control the civil aspects and what we sue people for. And to me, I agree with your sentiment that if he would have sued her for battery, I feel like that would be the better case. Now, I don't know if by the time he chose to sue her, if it was outside the statute of limitations, depending on what jurisdiction this battery came in, because we've had things happening in Virginia, where the case is, New York, LA, Australia, the Bahamas. So different jurisdictions and different timing could have affected that. But I think he's got a better case as a victim of domestic violence than he does to prove defamation, legally speaking. And this finger would have been a part of the domestic violence or the abuse that he suffered at the hands of Amber Heard. I agree with you there. I think that is actually the better case. Hell Gordy. Can Dr. Curry take the stand again? Would you see that beneficial for JD's case? I'm going to hold this answer for Wednesday when I talk about what witnesses I would call for rebuttal for Johnny Depp's case. Dr. Curry's name is likely to be on the list. Ashley Medler, can they bring up the tissue pause camera flash? So I actually think this is the best one of the nitpicks, Ashley. The sniffing, the fake crying, the looking at the jury, you know, that stuff is <clears throat> her acting scared when Johnny Depp stood up is, you know, is an eye roll, okay? The jury didn't see it. But but when I watch the wiping of the face, the look to the side, okay? Because there's definitely a side eye, the pause, the flash, then she brings it down. That's the most damning of them all. And how you could get it in is you can ask her, are you posing for the camera? Are you doing this for a publicity stunt? You can do that on cross and then potentially show her that video, video footage. But I'll save more discussion for that on cross and I'll make a note to add it, Ashley. All right. Ashley K, anyone know how to join as a member? Um, I think below this video, there is a link that you can click that says join or a button that you can click that says join that you can become a member. If not, or if it is confusing, we will post on the community page a very simple, and a lot of people were asking where the community page is. So if you're on your iPad, for some reason it doesn't work, but on your phone or on the computer, if you go to our page, there's tabs where it's like homepage, videos, playlists, community, click that community page. I post pictures there. Sometimes we post polls there. We post things there to interact with you all. Um, and we will post how to become a member on that community page if you can't figure it out during this video, Ashley. Speaking of members, Sherry Air Force Vet, one of our early members, seen many ask about metadata. Could JD's team request this data through AH's cell phone providers as IT forensics? Yes, but they might not have it. She may have destroyed the phone. She may have deleted some of the metadata. She may have deleted the pictures after she printed them. It's very weird, and I don't know what all has happened in the litigation on this topic, but it seems to me that they have fought to get this metadata and to get her text messages and things like that, and they have been stonewalled. Jennifer Park, AH's deceased mom texted JD, can this be used? Uh, there is a um, uh, unavailable witness exception to hearsay that you might be able to get it in. I don't know what the text message is, so it still has to be relevant. Um, it would have to be used certain... Um, hearsay exceptions to get it in because it would technically be 
hearsay, but potentially. Michelle, sorry if you covered it already, but will the makeup artist statement stating Heard had no injuries be permissible? Thanks for all these chats. Absolutely, Michelle. That's what makes it fun. So thank you guys for all the chats. Um, I think that if she's on the witness list, she can be called as a witness in rebuttal. That's definitely one, one way it could get in. You can't just play the article or post a tweet or something like that. You could potentially, again, impeach Amber Heard with it. There's going to be a lot of things to potentially impeach Amber Heard with while she's on the stand. So it could come in. We'll see if it does. Pat, Pat Tilb, 1211. Amber Heard says she cleaned up JD after he threw up, et cetera. Does anyone actually think AH ever rinsed her own coffee cup, let alone clean JD up this way? Yassi Goldmeyer. Could the posing for camera be used against her as a way of invalidating her testimony to show that she is acting for the camera? So I don't think it's going to invalidate her testimony, but that's the point is you can't just say, ha, look, we caught you doing this. You ask her the question, right? And let her give you the answer because she's not going to give you the, the answer you think. And then you can impeach her with that. Like, did you pose for the camera? Now, here's the question. Will the judge let you use that as impeachment or will the judge say that video shows you cannot impeach her with that video because the judge could keep it out if they don't think it's reliable enough to impeach her with. It's not the same as a sworn statement in the past. Elmer Sy, if testimony is different from the deposition, can you get away with claiming that there were errors in the transcript and you have no time to fix it? Great question. So yes, you can say there are errors in the transcript. And actually, Dr. Hughes said that about her hourly rate. It said $100 in the transcript, but it was actually $500. With, with something like that, you can just correct on the stand and it's no big deal. But if it's something like, he never abused me with a bottle, now I'm saying he abused me with a bottle. Oh man, I think I just wrote on my shirt. Um, and now, she, now she's saying he abused me with a bottle. Something like that, you can't just claim was an error, number one. Number two, it would be untruthful to say, I didn't have time to fix it because you always have the opportunity to read your deposition. At the end of every depo, we say, do you want to read or waive that reading? And if you read it for inaccuracies, you can provide an errata sheet where you write down page three, line 26. Um, there was an error. This is the error. It said $100. It should say $500. And you submit that to the court reporter. Both lawyers can look at it, scrutinize it, say, that's not what I remember hearing. That's what I remember hearing. Then we can go back to the stenographer's recording or what the stenographer remembers and we can get that deposition corrected. There are absolutely procedures in place to correct your deposition. So they'd be walking into some fire there if they tried to say they didn't have time to fix it. Jamie, sorry if you covered this. What's the status of the metadata? I found a motion for failure to comply from 322. Will this be brought up on cross? So the metadata and the text messages, I am going to dig into more tomorrow on cross what I would do to cross Amber Heard because those are topics that will definitely be in there. The status of the metadata right now is that it doesn't exist and Amber Heard did not provide it. Kelsey Karash. Sorry if you already asked this, but do you know if the, G the jury is all female? No, it's actually majority male. April DeVito. Uh, our firm phone number is 727. 441-9030. And if anybody can't write that down, go to right here, tragoslaw.com. So get rid of the at tragoslaw.com. All of our information is there. It may be a different like Google tracking number on the page, but you can call us there, get into contact with us. If you have a personal injury case, car accident, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, um, slip and fall, nursing home negligence, med mal, that is what we do. That's what our firm does. We also do criminal defense. We're based in Florida, but those kind of cases we can kind of handle all over um, on a case-by-case -case basis. If it's outside of that realm and not within that practice area and you have a question about a case, I'm happy to help you talk to you about it. And we have lawyers that we work with all over the country in different practice areas. So we'd love to refer you to somebody if you do have a question, but just realizing what cases we actually handle. Um, all right, Hillary G. The eyes have it. Amber Heard lost me the first day of her testimony when she was not wearing eye makeup since the trial started. No mascara running down means no tears. Rang staged and dishonest uh, thoughts. So the makeup thing, a lot of people have, have talked about it. That's something I'd stay away from on cross as far as asking her why she's not wearing makeup right now or why isn't her mascara running? Uh, are those real tears? I would probably stay away from it. But I do think because her side has made, made such a big issue about makeup, there are some people on the jury that could be 
thinking about it and focusing on it. Lisa Randolph, who decides what people are allowed to sit at the trial in person? Is it limited to the size of the courtroom? Yes. So it's the public. Anybody can go and sit there. Um, but if it's, if it's packed and there's limited capacity, they obviously can't add chairs. So sometimes like in the Theranos trial, because it was not televised, um, Elizabeth Holmes, which we're also covering, Pete's doing uh, videos on Sonny Bawani and that case. There were so many people there that they had to get an overflow room where they could watch it on screens. Zeus, what's up, man? New member. Luciana Soler, can Amber Heard be sued by DV association victims if she loses the trial for damages of, to the image of the DV victims? Great content as usual. This is a great question. So I don't think she's really going to be sued, but it would be interesting to see what the ACLU and what the Washington Post and all them would do if it comes back that she actually lied and a jury has decided and made a judgment that she lied in this op-ed op about being a domestic violence victim. Now, I don't think they'll do anything. They want to wash their hands of this and have nobody talk about this ever again um, would be my guess, but we'll see. Very good question. Thoughtful. Kara Welsh, any possibility the trial ends before the allotted time? It seems like absolutely not. They're adding um, the judges, extending the schedule from 9 to 5.30 instead of 10 to 5. So they're going to try to pack as much in over the last two weeks as they possibly can. Bika, how can the defense argue he cut his own finger off if the Australia audio has her admitting to accidentally doing it, how can they rewrite reality? Again, that Australia um, <coughs> audio hasn't come in yet. So we'll see if it comes in during cross. But it almost sounded like on direct for Amber Heard that she admitted maybe she had something to do with it, but she didn't know his finger was injured at the time. So we'll see. The disgruntled moderate. What are your thoughts on AH and her expert saying, you know, during a lot of testimony. I hate it. I hate it when an expert says, you know, I try not to say, you know, especially when I'm talking in this kind of forum. Now, if we're talking about sports or something, everybody knows the same about, and I say, you know, you know, Steph Curry's good, you know, magic suck, you know, because everybody knows that stuff because you can just watch and know that. But if I'm explaining how a trial works and explaining that evidence won't come in, you know, well, you don't know. That's probably why you're here. And that's why an expert takes a stand. I'm not saying I never say, you know, I'm sure I say plenty, but when an expert takes a split stand, especially that Google Q expert, you have to explain to me what I'm looking at. I realize numbers. I know numbers. I know 31 is more than 29, but explain to me what that actually means. Don't just say, you know, and he didn't say, you know, very much, but I don't think he gave a full explanation. Some other experts have said, you know, a lot, and I don't think it's a good look for experts. Rach, do you think... The internet helps his lawyers, i.e. are his lawyers seeing stuff like the makeup being released later than their relation with JD? I do. I do think his lawyers are seeing that stuff. I think there's so much on TikTok and Snapchat and YouTube and Instagram and everywhere that I do think his lawyers are probably watching things and finding ways to pick apart what Amber Heard is saying because people are out there like private eyes gathering information. Lisa Girl, regarding, uh, regarding the tissue, I didn't think they were allowed to have flash photography in the courtroom. Not that I'm an AH fan. I'm in favor of JD, but it looks like the computer changes. So that could be the case. All this stuff could be doctored. And again, that could render it unreliable. So I have no idea. The clips I saw, looks like flash. Some, there is some flash photography from what I, from what I've heard and gathered in the courtroom. Somebody told me her PR team took it. That would not be allowed. There's no PR team there doing flash photography. And if there is no flash photography, the judge will obviously know and the lawyers won't even try to use it because they'll say, well, I know there's no flash photography, so this couldn't possibly be um, this couldn't possibly be authentic. So that could be true. Take everything with a grain of salt you see on Twitter and on Instagram and on TikTok because that stuff can be doctored easily. Ben, become a member. When, when uh, I, I saw that we had our first member, I, my guess was that it was you. Ali McKenzie Har, what are there many hearsay objections to AH's testimony? Why are there? Because she continuously tries to say what other people said to corroborate her story. She even tries to use her own words to bolster um, her testimony. It's, other people have asked, why can't she say her own words? Because it's self-serving hearsay. And it's, it's self-serving because you're saying you said something contemporaneously. For instance, 
if I got injured and at the time I didn't tell anybody I was injured. I just went around, went along with my business and I was like, yeah, I'm perfectly fine. Everything's fine. But instead, if I said I got injured on this date and I told this guy I got injured on this date, I told him how I was injured. Well, that's just self-serving hearsay trying to say you corroborated it at the time and said it contemporaneously, as opposed to when you're on the stand, the way you should say it is say, I got injured on that date. This is how I got injured. And you just explain your experience. That's how it's supposed to work. Old man Odinson. I wonder if Dr. Hughes will see her on the stand and completely regret her diagnosis. It's possible. Laura M. Medically speaking, how could JD wait so long after his finger cut to go to the ER, intense pain, bleeding? I would say it might have something to do with drugs and alcohol, potentially, especially if he was able to use his finger to write in blood across the wall. Oh, Lauren, thank you for the super chat. Doug D, new member. What's up? Recognize that name for sure. New Chris, the trial is getting more coverage than the OJ trial. Yes. This, I mean, I can't remember a trial getting this much, much coverage ever, personally. Susie Adrian, unrelated question. New suburb. You said your father's done lives with you. Can't find a video from the list. Um, he has done lives with me. The la I'm trying to think of the last one he did. We call him Big George. Usually that's the, it might be in the description. I'll, I'll try to post some of the lives that he's done, but we've actually had some discussions, Susie, from all of you. And I may, may be biting off more than I can chew and making a mistake, but I know you'll all forgive me if it goes down fast. But we've had some discussions because a lot of people, because they know I can't live stream the whole trial because I am a full-time lawyer doing this lawyer stuff um, every day. Uh, I have full caseload and I do this stuff for fun. When I have time, I schedule it like an appointment. But we may be able to do certain portions of the trial live. And I talked to my dad and we may potentially live stream and live react to Amber Heard's cross-examination if and only if we get enough interest and all of you let me know in the comments and in the community page by liking the videos, getting the subscribers to 75K before the trial comes back if we can hit all those benchmarks, then I may try to stretch it a little bit. And I'm going to have my dad on me on there with me as well so that I can pop off if I need to um, take a call or if I have a an appointment, things like that. But like I said, I'm supposed to be in trial here. So I have a little bit more time than I was expecting. So if you all want me to do that, and I know there are a lot of other lawyers that are live streaming. I'm not going to pull anybody else off of their channels. I'm going to let them do their thing. But I may try to dip my toe in the water just by doing portions of the trial. We'll see. Stay tuned. Bika, Bika, serious crimes were accused by her, prison worthy. What can come about those accusations beyond her during this trial? What if she accused him of murder? Well, she can't accuse him of murdering herself because she's there. Um, but yeah, I mean, this stuff could, could uh, produce criminal investigations. It could produce criminal charges, depending on the statute of limitations, depending on whether or not a prosecutor thinks there's enough evidence to prove it. But yeah, there are real ramifications when you accuse people of crimes. And I think that's what Johnny Depp is trying to fight against here. Smile face. What do you think about the judge on this case? I think she runs a tight ship. She is um, <clears throat> uh, doing a good job making calls, but I disagree with a lot of her calls. I disagree with a lot of her, you know, what she's letting in or not letting into evidence, her hearsay objections or leading question objections. I don't like how she's calling and what her definitions are for a lot of those things. So I would say I probably dif differentiate with her or disagree with her with some of her evidentiary rulings. But overall, I like her demeanor. She seems nice and she's running a tight ship. Marlene Barone. We have to track the, what Pete says and would ask Amber Heard and uh, see what or how many the Johnny Depp's lawyers ask. They know the case a million times better than I do. So I expect them to have a lot more ammunition. Mine's just going to kind of be for fun with a cursory look over of what I've seen in the trial, how I'd cross her. But I'm going to have some fun with it. I'm going to dig in a little bit. Jennifer Lab Mama. Can Elizabeth, Elizabeth Moss now be called as a witness potentially, but I would be surprised if she was. Oh, Lauren. Can Amber Heard be proclaimed as mentally unstable, hence not responsible for her actions? So for the most part, the answer to this would be no. Um, and the, the problem with that is her diagnosis was not of one of psychosis or where she doesn't know right from wrong or what she's doing from what I've, you know, talking to other experts and listening to how they described it. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect that. 
Maiden Iron. Iron. Why is it okay for them to have all of Johnny Depp's texts, but Amber Heard can get away with not submitting them? In my opinion, her picture shouldn't be admissible because there are no dates to cross-reference the abuse. So Maiden Iron, these texts are going to be a big part of how I show you guys what you can do when it's very frustrating and you feel like a defendant is not following the court's rulings and the rules, and it's not a fair trial where you're giving up something, but they're not giving up their text messages. And while it's not as good as having her text messages, but there are some things you can do on cross that can intimate to the jury that she's hiding something or playing dirty pool, basically. So keep track, stick with me tomorrow. When we talk about cross, we'll answer this question in more depth. Julie Perry. Thank you for the super chat. Sherry, Air Force vet, worked with Big Data and Cloud. No matter what happened to her phone, the cellular provider, i.e. AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, would, this would be considered IT forensics. Well, I would expect Johnny Depp's lawyer to go after that and get that, you know? So that, that's really what I would expect. And we've gotten a lot from IT companies, but usually we can get it from the person because they don't know how to delete it. And we have our expert look into it and find it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean- to me, I feel like it's something they should be able to get, but they haven't been able to. Jelly Donut, or Don't Shake. Thank you for the super sticker. Naomi Ekaveria. Thank you for the uh, super chat. Team YouTube, here's another name I recognize. Another new member, the crew. Breathing in spirit. Thank you for the super chat. Oima. Hey, I've been watching The Staircase on Netflix, and I'm curious if you could do a video on the Michael Peterson case, the forensic scandal, and the Alfred plea. I think it's an interesting case. So we, from time to time, ask for suggestions on cases. So let us know whenever that happens. We will put this on the list as well. And whichever ones have the most interest, that's how we pick it. It's kind of a, I'm a majority rule kind of guy, which is what I always say. Um, so if this one gets the most interest, we will absolutely do it. And that's what we try to focus on. I don't pick the ones I like the best. I just pick the ones you all are most interested in. Naomi's back. What happens if someone from the jury looks up the case on social media and how can the court tell if they've done outside research? So there are different ways of telling if somebody lets the cat out of the bag, that's one way the court can individually question them, which is what I would ask as a lawyer. I would ask the court to do this um, and try to figure it out. Hope they tell the truth. That's really all you can do. You can't ask them for their phones and their IP addresses to do this background search here. That's not realistic. If it was that high profile and they felt the need to do that, they would have sequestered the jury, which they didn't in this case. Max Sauce, who lawyer do you think will do the cross for Amber Heard? Uh, it's going to be Camille. Camille's been doing all the objections. Um, most of the, the time it's been, um, most of the time it's been just one lawyer per witness. That's how most, most judges handle it. Jennifer Lab, Mama, AH copying Jay Foster's testimony in The Accused. I have to look into that. I've seen that movie, but I don't remember the exact testimony. I've mentioned it every time something's popped into my head that I think she's copying, which has happened a couple of times. Although again, not copying word for word, like a lot of people tried to take that talented Mr. Ripley out of context and they kind of ruined it because um, it was the same sentiment, but not verbatim, but a lot of people said it was verbatim. So kind of a miss. Uh, Cat Broad. You think Amber Heard would go for a mistrial if she thinks that she would lose? If you go for a mistrial and it's obvious, the other side can file a motion that you have to pay all the attorney's fees and costs for the trial that you caused a mistrial on. So she would be costing herself tons of money. I don't think she's going to do that. Wayne Lang, thank you for the super sticker. A name I'll never forget. Our first member here, Wayne Lang. Sandra Beattie. Why is the case in Virginia, not LA, new member, Ohio? Awesome, Sandra. Thank you for being a new member or subscriber. Um, the case is in Virginia because that's where Johnny Depp chose to have it because the servers and the printers for the Washington Post, which is what this entire defamation case is about, not domestic violence that happened in the Bahamas or LA or New York or Australia, but about the Washington op-ed piece that was printed and the servers for the, the electronic version went out from Virginia and Virginia has much more favorable defamation laws and protections than California does. Breathing in spirit. How does legal consent marriage vows with known abuse at time of contract, along with the non-disclosure at divorce, play into the condition of justifiable defamation? 
So legal consent is not something that anymore in today's day and age is ever something that just lasts in perpetuity. You can pull your consent at any moment, even in the middle of something happening. So whether you're married or not, you can still commit sexual violence. Um, with known abuse at the time of the contract, along with the non-disclosure of divorce. So, so really the non-disclosure, in my opinion, can only be used for her to show that she knew this was going to hurt him. Um, I, cause this isn't a violation of a non-disclosure agreement trial. Um, there's no such thing as justifiable defamation. Uh, if what you're saying is true and it hurts the other person, it's not defamation. Uh, you can't justifiably lie just to hurt another person. Ron Berner is back from Instagram to YouTube to now being a YouTube member. Thanks, buddy. Najim Idrissi from the Netherlands. Have you noticed the moment that Amber Heard dropped the name Kate Moss that the lady next to Camille tapped the arm of Camille just before Ben Chu turned around the fist bump? They were all waiting and ready for it. I can guarantee there's gonna, <clears throat> there's going to be something that that opened the door to. And I hope it's obvious and I hope we can we can tell. New Chris, remind us what trial you're covering after this. So the next couple coming up that are on my docket are uh, the Dan Markell uh, FSU law professor murder trial and then the Valo Daybell. Those are the two big ones kind of on the docket for me um, that seem to have the most interest at this point. Pete's still covering the Sonny Balwani trial as well. That's still dragging on forever. Smile face. Out of everyone involved in the case, other than A.H. and Johnny Depp, who do you think has the most to lose with his case being published worldwide? So, um, uh, I think Marilyn Manson maybe has come off most negatively throughout this case, potentially. I think that would be my answer. Michael Palmer, thanks for the super chat. Hi, Peter. Off topic. I know, but I have a question for you. How can someone being charged three times under conspiracy yet it's only one conspiracy. That makes no sense to me. So this is a hard question. And I really want to answer it for you. This is a hard question to answer um, in a vacuum. If I saw the complaint, I might be able to answer it better for you. Um, so why don't you email me the complaint, lawyer, you know, at gmail.com. And I'll try to answer that uh, for you privately. Uh, maybe even bring my dad to talk about it too. Um, but yeah, I, I think it could be different based on a different set of circumstances. It could be, uh, uh, based on different victims potentially. Um, that's what I can think of off the top of my head, but maybe different time periods, like conspiracy for this time period, this time period, that time period, I'm not positive, but my guess, if I saw the complaint, I could figure it out for you. Amber love reigns. How were they able to find an unbiased jury? It would be hard for people to find people that are not fans of one or the other and all probably had an opinion. I don't know if that's true. I feel like it's easier to find more unbiased jury in this case than in the Chauvin trial or the Rittenhouse trial, because whether or not you like Amber Heard or like Johnny Depp, I don't think you're automatically going to rule in favor of them in this case specifically. It didn't seem like it was horribly difficult to find, um, to find an unbiased jury, but maybe I'm wrong. I feel like a lot of people commenting here have said they're pretty unbiased, although some are very obviously biased, mostly in favor of Johnny Depp, and most people admit to that. Chris Pember, what do you think about the show Better Call Saul? I've never seen it. I've started Breaking Bad five times, even with my wife trying to get through it. I just, I find it kind of depressing and I live in a world that deals with a lot of this crap all the time. So I try to watch more uplifting shows or fun shows um, uh, or like redeeming shows. I know there is some redemption there, but I, I just have never really gotten into it. Bessie Rumors, thank you for the super sticker. Audrey Jensen, can lawyer call her out for fake tears? Not a good look. I would I would be shocked if they did. Beverly, how do you prepare a client for cross-examination? I'd be very anxious if I was Amber Heard's team preparing her for Camille. So when I do it, it's all about telling the truth makes this easier because it's easier to remember the truth and explain the truth. There's going to be some bad things that come out. Try to answer as shortly and succinctly as you can. If it's a yes or answer, try to just answer yes or no. Um, and I prepare them by cross-examining them. We're having another lawyer in my firm cross-examine them. We try to pick apart the worst stuff and cross them on it. We usually know where they're going to trip up. We try to wor work through that. Um, so a lot of preparation. That's that's how we that's how we get through it. Minnesota Mickey, talk us through the time frame and what happens after they all rest. Does the jury get sequestered 
if they don't come up with a verdict right away. So the jury will go back in the jury room. They'll deliberate. The lawyers and the clients go back. That's when that's when I really just, it's like the come down from adrenaline rush. And I'm like, whew, usually I have a headache. I'll start sweating. It's really fun though, because you feel like you've done it. You're, you've finished the big work. So you go back with your client. It's all you can think about. It's probably the most stressful time. I'll work on something else. So I'm not focused on, you know, just waiting, watching the clock go by, waiting for a verdict. Um, but the jury, they go back in the jury room, they deliberate, they vote, they discuss, they look through evidence if they want to, they get breakfast, lunch, and dinner ordered in if they want to, however many days it takes, and the judge just waits, and we wait, the jury can have a question, and they can ask us a question, which we can come back and answer, but both sides and the judge have to agree to answer that question, so a lot of things happen, they're not necessarily sequestered, like they can go home at the end of the day, um, but they're there working through deliberations the entirety of a day. Becky. What are the possible outcomes in this trial? Can both win? Can both lose? I think it'd be hard for both to win, but I think both could lose. And I think either one could win and lose. So I think it could be a split decision where Johnny wins, she loses, or Amber wins and he loses, or they both could lose where they just don't think either is defamation. They both abused each other. And it was probably true what both of them said about each other. Kelly Wadsworth. Love the reaction of AH's cross video idea. I'm team JD, but love that you are impartial. Thank you, Kelly. And I think it's going to be fun. Katie Foreman, best attorney channel on YouTube. Thank you so much. How can JD's team remind the jurors and introduce evidence into the testimony of previous JD witnesses who contradict Amber Heard, but testified weeks before Amber Heard's cross during impeachment with her, which again, I'm going to talk about more tomorrow and also in closing arguments, take it through methodically, put a, a PowerPoint presentation where you have the picture of the witness so they can remember who it was, what their title is, Johnny Depp's friend, doorman, house manager, island manager, whatever, and then what they said. OG said, would love to hear you cover the trial of the ex-wife of the law professor who was killed. That is on our list. Sherry, all cellular data can be requested through her cell phone as I've seen done during criminal trials. Yes, I've seen it done too and I've actually done it. But there, is, there are ways to delete it if you don't have your cell phone, if it's so old. If some of this is so old, a lot of companies don't keep stuff past seven years. So I don't know how it's not there, okay? I'm with you and I agree with you. It should be there, but it's not. And I don't know how that's possible. Maybe we'll find out more on cross. Christy Booth, thank you. New member. Team YouTube, do you think the jury will come up with a fast verdict because of Memorial Day weekend? I don't. I think because the trial is so long, they'll probably take their time. Doug D, what I don't understand is why they are trying to make till death phrase sound like it was said in a bad way, but it's written in marriage vows. I agree. The till death part doesn't make a difference to me. What makes a difference to me is if you're super scared of somebody and you think they may kill you at multiple times with a broken bottle and other ways, would you really give them a big knife? I think the answer to that is no. That's kind of what I think about more than that it's uh, that it says till death. Prince Charming's mom, new member. Thank you. Sherry. Oh, I keep getting my comment wrong. Metadata from Amber Heard cell provider via the cloud as this data doesn't get deleted and used in criminal cases. I think things even in the cloud get deleted after five years, sometimes seven years, sometimes. So I do think sometimes it gets deleted and they don't store it forever, but I could be wrong. I'm not an IT forensics person. It seems like you've got a lot of experience and knowledge on this. So, but I'm sure they hired the best experts as we know, Mr. 975 an hour. I'm sure they tried to get to the bottom of this. Victoria Gavi, do you think JD will sue the ACLU if he wins against Amber Heard since he'll never be able to collect the $50 million from Amber? No, because it's really hard for other people to know that she was lying. It's okay for them to, I mean, as bad as it sounds, it's okay for them to want to exploit this story um, but because they believed it was true and, and they it'd be really tough for him to ever collect from them. Thank you, Victorious. New Chris, in 2012, someone I know was charged with murder of a person and attempted murder of two police officers. They are in jail, still haven't gone to trial. It's horrible. That's what I'm talking about with our legal system and everything being slowed down with the courts being clogged and certain lawyers delaying for horrible reasons. Um, you wouldn't believe the reason this last case got continued, but it happens. Pat V, I did an article in law school. Thank you for the super chat, Pat V about the court system and how those delays are so horrible. Even some on death row and, you know, the appeals getting just dragged out forever, which maybe they want to, I guess, if they're on death row, but different cases, different stuff happening to delay. 
S flow. Did the defamation specifically involve physical abuse? Unpopular opinion. Def, def, definitely seemed to be at least a mentally abusive drug addict drunk. Listen, that can be an unpopular opinion all you want. Verbal abuse, in my opinion, is locked and loaded in this case. Now, if they can extend that verbal abuse to physical and sexual abuse, I do think it needs to be more than verbal abuse to have her win. Um, but if the jury thinks that verbal abuse is enough to make her the abuse victim she claimed to be in the op-ed, then it may be enough for her to legally win, which is what we've been talking about, which is why I would have gone with a simple defense of Amber Heard, kind of like what you're talking about to think you seem level-headed, but some of these jurors might not be. And they may think she's saying he's like the worst of the worst, abusing her with bottles and cavity searches and beating her brains at all the time. And there's no evidence of that. So I can't possibly rule in favor of her. So I don't know. I think they may have messed up on that. Tammy Jean, thank you for the super sticker. Rebecca Kuhn, if JD gets a judgment in his favor, what are Amber Heard's chances of appeal? Or does she lose the chance because she's countersuing? No, she, she doesn't lose the chance. She can appeal. We'll talk about what appellate issues come out more after the trial. I haven't seen a ton of appellate issues from her side. Um, there have been some from his side. Gibran Khan. Fan of your content and channel. Thank you. Just playing devil's advocate. I love it. I welcome it. I, I want devil's advocates. I like argument. And I, my mind is far from made up. Isn't this, trial, isn't this trial about defamation and not DVSA? That's not devil's advocate. That's a fact. And that's something I've been saying the entire time. From the beginning, I said, this feels like a criminal trial. That's That both of them are trying to prove that the other person should be convicted of domestic violence. That's not what it is. And I think confusing those issues helps Johnny Depp and hurts Amber Heard. If so, doesn't Amber Heard have a solid case if she truly believed she was abused freedom of speech? I don't know who you think you're playing devil's advocate with because this is literally what I said in the beginning. You are right. And I agree with you. And this would have been my defense. I would have said in Amber Heard's mind, she's an abuse victim. And that's what she said in this op-ed, closed case, wash my hands of it if I'm her lawyers. But instead, they've created this mountain of a burden, in my opinion, to prove that he's this horrible, serious abuser the worst of the worst. And that's where I think they're going to have trouble proving their case. So thank you for the comment. Melastasi, thanks for all these lives. Would be great if you and dad cover Amber Heard's cross. Also, the last live I saw with you and your dad was Roe v. Wade leak. Yes, we did. That was a live that was very recent. He's been on a bunch. And I think we are going to try to do that cross if there is enough interest. Donna Lacey, thank you. Lauren, how is someone's record not able to be brought into evidence in a civil trial, it's preponderance of the evidence as opposed to beyond a reasonable doubt in criminal trial. Someone's history seems relevant, but well, even if it's a criminal trial, prior arrests don't always come in. Prior accusations don't always come in. Certain convictions do. Certain judgments do. That's an important distinction. Just because you've been accused of something doesn't mean it's going to come out. Mystified, can JD's team bring up the fact that she lied to immigration about her assistant status in the U.S., she lies. Again, not likely, but maybe to prove that she's a lying liar who lies, I guess, is what you're going with, but unlikely. Brian, you would make a wonderful judge one day. No, never going to happen. Uh, with the way you have remained impartial throughout your review of this trial, I thank you for the comment, but I would never want to be a judge. I want to be in the action. I like the action. Um, I like the battle. Diane Tishner, thank you. New member, what's up? Evelina S, thank you for the super chat. Donna Lacey, Amber, Amber's makeup artist is on JD's witness list, has already said in the UK trial she didn't see any bruises. Why is Amber sticking to this? Because maybe Amber thinks that she won the UK trial, which she did. So maybe she thinks it worked there. Maybe it'll work here. Maybe Johnny's going to call this makeup artist on rebuttal. Um, and we'll see what the jury believes. She's sticking to her answers at this point. And at this point, it's her story and she's sticking to it. All right, who's next? Shazabel Colors. At what point does the jury get told she didn't hand over the phone? I think it's gonna be during cross, but stay tuned until tomorrow to hear how I would get that out and how I would try to get that out. I don't know if they've already agreed to a stipulation read by the judge or anything like that. That's happened, you know, outside the presence of the jury. Cause I've been trying to stick to that. Um, but, uh, we will see Max Sauce, You skipped my other super chat friend. 
I've read multiple super chats to you. I might have been behind on time, um, but try to get it in. Uh, try to get it in again if you want to. And I will, as I said, I will try to answer as many super chats as I can. Sometimes it's impossible to get to all of them. Um, so I understand if you're frustrated, but know that going into it, that it's not a guarantee I'm going to get to it. I'm get, getting to absolutely as many as I can. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button because we're almost done here. And I want to do a giveaway on today's um, live. If we hit 70K, I'm updating it. Uh, we're not even close. We've only gotten a couple hundred during this. So we're probably not going to hit 70K um, on this super chat. I mean, on this live, but whenever we hit 70K, I mean, 75K, whether it's on a live or not, we will be doing our next giveaway. Lisa V, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, everybody, don't forget um, that we are doing future lives. We are also posting other videos this week, so check them out. And let me know what you think. If you're just here for Johnny Depp, let me know if you have any interest in those other cases. And it's fine if you say in the comments, I have no interest in this case. I'm just here for Johnny Depp. Just let me know. Or if there is another case that you're interested in, because that's how we learn and that's how we build content. Oima, new member. Awesome. We got a ton of new members, which is cool. We're going to do a lot of kind of cool little things for the members. We're not going to take away from anybody that's a subscriber um, or even just somebody who watches the videos. We love all of you. We're going to always do, you know, this type of thing with the lives and stuff. We're just going to try to do some additional value ads for the members just for fun. Uh, Toe Senior, you would be a great defense attorney. Thank you. Done a lot of it. What's the line between DA and an argument uh, I know couples have. Sometimes it can be in the interpretation of a judge, a jury, a prosecutor, a law enforcement officer, whether that line is crossed. Now, obviously, if there's physical contact, it turns into battery. Um, but you know, verbal abuse sometimes, or mental abuse, or financial abuse sometimes is in the eye of the beholder. Mr. 25th Fret, Peter's firm is going to need a bigger office after this. We got room to grow, baby. We got two offices right now. Uh, Clearwater St. Pete, we've had an office in Tampa before. Easy to start that back up. We're ready. We're ready. Got plenty of lawyers. Max Sauce, you're back again, and you're a member this time. Awesome. Thank you. So Darling Fillmore asked, what does rebuttal mean? And... Tyler Davis, who's from St. Pete, the backyard. What's up, Tyler? If you ever need anything, man, hop over to the office um, or call or email since that's what we do these days. Um, can Amber Heard's team cross after JD's rebuttal? So let's first explain what rebuttal is, and then we'll see if, I'm not going to say can they cross, but we'll talk about whether or not Amber Heard can have a rebuttal. Rebuttal is when you can come back after Amber Heard has had her case in chief and rebut or respond to that case. And you can bring more evidence that responds to what happened in her case, Chief. So Johnny Depp went first, Amber Heard goes second, and uh, Johnny Depp is going to get to go again because he has the burden of proving his claim. He's the plaintiff in the case. But because Amber Heard is the counterclaim plaintiff, she may be able to go again at the end and rebut his rebuttal and any claims he makes about her counterclaim, but it will be limited in scope to just her counterclaim. So very interesting and kind of convoluted because of how this case goes. Is college is going to college for a lawyer? So this is Jeannie Bear. Truly as hard as many say. I think I would be a good lawyer, but I am a bad test taker. So it is tough if you're not a good test taker, but there are lots of law schools. And if your GPA is high enough, they really kind of split. They care about GPA and they care about the LSAT scores. Okay. So if you can keep your GPA up, that can balance a worse LSAT score. I don't think it's so hard. I think it's a lot of work. Um, and I think if you're willing to work and willing to read and push through and grind, you can do great. But if you're not someone who's really great at time management, at multitasking, at reading and retaining, then it's probably going to be tough. But there are lots of other things you can do around the law, right? Um, you can write about the law. You can be a paralegal. You can do lots of things. But I wouldn't give up on going to law school just because you're a bad test taker. I think it's worth a try. And if you can get into a law school, you can get through and you can graduate, you can be an amazing lawyer because there are great lawyers that went to terrible schools, um, even some of them that went to that school in Gainesville. And then there are lawyers that went to grade school, like great schools like Florida State and Harvard. So, you know, take that for what you will. But that's awesome. And I encourage you to do it. Lauren, earlier this weekend, you talked about reliability when it comes to evidence brought in. Why would some audio recordings be reliable and others not if they're all from her phone? 
There's lots of reasons for this. And I hate to do this to you because we're coming close to the end of the video. But the first 20 minutes of the video, I um, broke this down in detail of what evidence is reliable, why certain evidence is not coming in in this case, and why other evidence is. So I really encourage you to check out the beginning of this video. I went into depth answering your question. Laura Flint, if she's found to be even somewhat abusive, wouldn't that call into question her claim to be post-trial for DV? I agree with you, and yes, I think so, but that's not the end of the defamation suit. She said she believes she's a domestic abuse victim, uh, and she dealt with this two years ago, and she had to feel the wrath of a rich and powerful male counterpart to this domestic abuse. So if she was even abused somewhat, I do think it would fit into truth and therefore not be defamation. So whether or not she's the poster trial for DV is not uh, based on, I can't remember the guy's name that said he's going to play devil's advocate. It kind of uh, rhymed, but um, based on what he said, if they're sticking to defamation, it still would be good enough to get defamation, even if she's not the poster child for DV. Martha, what was your first case? My first case was, the first like couple cases I can remember was a misdemeanor battery case and a DUI. That, those are my first like criminal defense cases. My first personal injury cases were a couple car accidents, soft tissue damage, not huge cases, but really fun. As a prosecutor, my first couple cases were prosecuting DUI and loitering and prowling, which is an insane statute in Florida and so hard to prove. Somehow we proved it in one. And I heard that later it may get overturned on appeal because it's like fitting a square peg into a round hole and nobody ever uses that uh, statute anymore. Um, but I was handed the case saying, hey, you got a trial tomorrow. And I went and did it. And it was so fun. And we won. And it was a hard fought battle against the PD um, while I was at the state attorney's office. Those are my first couple cases. Thank you for asking. Okay. We're getting close to the end here. And, um, and so we're getting close to the end here. I want to thank everybody for jumping on. This was a lot of fun. I knew it was going to be kind of a little more intimate, which it was, and that was great. Uh, make sure you hit that reminder bell tomorrow at 3.30. I'm going to go through how I would cross Amber Heard Wednesday at 3.30. All of these are p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So wherever you're from, because everybody's from all over, make sure you hit the reminder bells. Check out our membership um, opportunities there to be a member. Check out the merch. We'll post the link as well. It's been a ton of fun for this ride. Let's get to 70K soon so we can do another giveaway. Thank you to everyone that joined. Hit the like button on the way out. And we will see you tomorrow. And check out, don't forget tonight, if you haven't seen that Gabby Petito case, a new lawsuit has been filed. It's wild. Gabby Petito, who was a travel influencer, went on a road trip to be a van lifer with her fiance, disappears. He comes back home to Florida, doesn't tell anybody about it. She winds up dead. Then he disappears and he winds up dead. It's a crazy story. Check it out tonight. We're going to go through that. Thanks everybody for joining in and thanks to all the new members. It was fun. This was the first set of members in a live. So we'll keep you posted on what's coming in the future, but thank you everybody. And until next time.